The <coughs> interesting thing about the, um, the, the success of the stimulus package that has been put in place in China to deal with economic crisis and recession that on the surface has had such uh, seemingly spectacular result in the first half of 2009 is that it actually compounds the very imbalances that Premier Wen uh, is so worried about and has expressed so eloquently on several uh, occasions. The government act enacted early last November a four trillion RMB fiscal stimulus plan funded by a um, absolutely massive and unprecedented binge of bank lending in the first six months of this year. And if you pick apart the four trillion RMB, and we've done that, about 72 percent of it uh, is concentrated in infrastructure. And that includes about a trillion RMB that were directed at a reconstruction after the Sichuan earthquake uh, of, a, of a year and a half ago. And surprise of surprises, or actually no surprise at all, when a centrally directed system orders the banks to lend and to funnel the proceeds of those loans to municipal governments who take the infrastructure projects off the shelves, you get growth. It's not like, you know, the United States where, you know, we do middle income tax cuts and people have the discretion as to how they want to dispose of the funds. They, ha they have a, you know, a GDP dial uh, in um, central planning headquarters at the NDRC uh, in Beijing. <coughs> and when they want eight, they'll give you eight. <laughs> so they had 7.1 percent average growth in the first half of this year. And it'll be like 9 percent, you know, give or take a tenth of a point in the second half of the year. And it will in the first half of the year, no surprise to me, 88 percent of it was concentrated in fixed investment. 88. Go back and look at the GDP contributions of investment to China over the past 10 years. The average over that 10 year period was 43. There's never been such an investment concentration of GDP uh, growth in modern China's history. And they were very determined to achieve this outcome because the economy actually was in much, much worse shape late last year than the government led on to believe. You know, they report their GDP growth uh, on a year-over-year -year basis. If you believe the numbers, and that's always a, a debate and an issue in China, uh, the growth rate slowed sequentially to 6.4 percent <coughs> late last year. 6.4, I mean, you know, uh, you know the, the rest of the world, including us in the U.S., you know, we would die for a number that's, a, you know, what was a tenth that. Uh, but if you calculate on a sequential quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis, the 6.4 was a number close to zero. And for an economy with a vast reservoir of surplus labor, that's unacceptable and intolerable. And in fact, the Chinese government admitted late last year that fully 20 million migrant workers had lost their jobs in export-sensitive Guangdong province. I have a rule of thumb. Whenever the Chinese admit something bad, I double it. Uh, and, you know, it, I, I don't know if that is actually right. But uh, there, were, there was an awful lot of labor-related distress in the face of um, a complete reversal of China's most powerful sectoral uh, growth driver, uh, exports. The sector had been growing plus 25 percent as recently as the middle of 2008, uh, went to a minus 25 in the spring of 2009. And so with growth and the economy hitting a wall, the government was determined to deliver GDP growth and use the combination of state-directed bank lending and, and uh, infrastructure uh, spending much more aggressively than we've ever seen uh, in, in the past. Now, here's where it gets interesting because if you look at the stimulus, it's a classic 
Chinese counter-cyclical stimulus action. Uh, they have words for these things in China, uh, slogans, and they call this their proactive fiscal stimulus, which always consists of two pieces. Uh, the jump start to um, fixed investment, and they did that uh, beautifully. And then they increased tax incentives for exporters uh, such that when the investment stimulus begins to fade, and it will begin to fade around the middle of 2010, then the export machine comes online uh, and takes over uh, where the investment stimulus leaves off. There's a big problem with that approach. While it worked brilliantly uh, a few times in the past, especially after the Asian financial crisis of 97, 98, and again after the global slowdown of 2000, 2001, it's not going to work this time. The investment delivered, uh, but the uh, export machine won't, uh, not because of export competitiveness issues in China, uh, but because external demand, courtesy of what is likely to be, I think, a multi-year shakeout uh, from the overextended American consumer, external demand is not going to come back. And so the second piece of the proactive fiscal stimulus uh, is going to be a disappointing, and that underscores uh, the likelihood uh, of another slowdown in Chinese economic growth around the middle of 2010. And as was the case late last year, when the economy slowed down and, and um, uh, uh, unemployment mounted, I think you can fully expect the Chinese to once again go back to the well with another round of bank-directed uh, investment spending that will further exacerbate uh, the imbalances, the structural imbalances of uh, the, the, the Chinese economy. So the Premier had it right. Focus on imbalances, they're getting worse, they're not getting better, and the